Well, Mr. Shepard, I don't know what you want to do. I gave your client my number to call. Um, he's, not, he's not calling in either. I don't know if you want to present something on his behalf and then he can I'm join. Ready, I'm ready to rock and roll, Your Honor. All right, go ahead. So as the court indicated, this is uh, kind of a, we're coming back um, after having the initial hearing. We broke last time. Both parties were to obtain hair. They have done that. Um, and the results of those are as follows. Um, my client, Mr. Belkamp, did test positive for THC uh, at a very low level. Ms. Collins um, tested positive at a very high level for methamphetamine. Um, and the bottom line, Your Honor, is this is exactly what we and why we petitioned the court, um, because the um, her conduct is that she hasn't addressed these issues. This is the kind of drug that is going to require rehabilitation. Uh, I see that she's shaking her head. And the reality is, is that's the problem because she's going to try to tell you that she's clean. This is exactly what she told you last time when we were here. Uh, she said, oh, no, no, I'll take a drug test. I'm fine. If she tries to say this is some old um, result, the last time she was tested was when she gave birth um, to this child 18 months ago. This isn't residual methamphetamine. This is active use given the amounts, which are, by the way, four times the cutoff limit uh, for the screening. And so the reality is, is that she should not have parenting time, uh, even supervised at this point until she uh, addresses her drug addiction issues. And at that point, she should petition the court with proof that she is clean and proof that she has addressed this because this is not the type of drug addiction that just solves itself. Look at Ms. Collins's history. The court is, I'm not going to go through it. The court's familiar with it. She said two terminations in part because of drug addiction. Now, I don't mean to pile on her. And I understand that addiction is not a choice. It is an addiction. But until she actually takes the steps necessary to get herself clean, then this should be put on hold. This ex parte order should be continued, Your Honor. Um, also, for the record, we have filed a, an actual complaint for custody, parenting time, and child support. So this isn't just an ex parte situation, Judge. This case will go on, and she'll have an adequate opportunity to show that she is not who she appears to be on paper. And again, the court's familiar with this drug, and this drug actually kills people. And if she doesn't take this seriously and wants to blame somebody else, then she's going to be next. And I hope that isn't true because this, 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 this child deserves to have her mom, but not in the condition her mom's in. I'd remind the court, she doesn't have a license. She doesn't have a job. She's staying with various friends and relatives. She is not in a position to be part of this child's life at this time, judge. And I'd ask that she take that responsibility seriously and that Mr. Veltkamp be continued uh, extended parenting time because he is the only party that we can count on here, judge. That's my position for today. All right, uh, ma'am, anything you want to say? Um, yeah, so I'm not here to deny anything. I'm not here for anybody to have sympathy for me. So what I did, I fell down and I didn't stay down, okay? And I'm taking the proper steps. So I shake my head because this is something that happened a few months back that I honestly went to walk in and been like, oh, hey, I went to walk in so confident and been like, oh, hey, I'm going to pass the hair file. Or, hey, yeah, I will take the hair follicle and fail it and have to pay Alex $200 back. Like, no, I honestly thought it was like, and I, and I understand that's not okay, but I'm taking the proper steps. Um, and I did actually just start work, um, for challenge manufacturing. I have a start date next Friday. Um, and I have been working with my mom at North star. So, um, yeah, I don't, there, there's no excuse for my actions. And um, I'm not going to sit here and cry out for uh, sympathy or anything like that. It's just, you know, there's consequences to my actions, and I understand that. Um, and I am paying for my own uh, drug screens at AccuScreen. And I did actually go down to Grand Rapids and get another hair follicle test. Um, and I'm waiting for that to come back. But I did put a retainer down on John Greer. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here today. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm. All right. You said, uh, you said you're taking the proper steps. What do you mean by that? 
Um, I am going to start going to like meetings and stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't say because I'm starting work. Okay, I've been trying to get my ID in. I just got that in the mail. Um, my brand new birth certificate to try to start a job. Like you can't start a job without forms of ID. And I don't think rehab, like I saw one time and I didn't stay down. You know what I mean? It, it, Alexis was not with me at that time either. Just want to make that clear. Um, but meeting and just working, I guess. And paying for my own drug screens at actor screen. Like I'm willing to do that. Like I'm willing to do whatever. So what kind, like, of my parents, what kind of meetings are you talking about? Um, just NA meetings. NA? Yeah. Where are those at? Uh, right. There, well, actually right there in the uh, right next to Alex's tattoo shop. Okay. Like a couple times a week or once a week or once a month? Or? It's like two or three times. As much as you need, I guess, really. They have meetings over there every day of the week. Oh, okay. And then, like, I also would like to get into Arbor Circle. Um, and that's a counselor. Like, I'll be able to talk to someone three times a week, you know? like. Right. What, uh, how many meetings have you been to? Huh? How many meetings have you been to? I've only been to one. Oh. And uh, so, I mean, we're putting all our cards on the table. Uh, meth, meth stays in uh, in your hair. Well, I mean, it stays in your hair, but they take about three months worth of hair when they do a test. Right. So, uh, realistically, how long are we looking at before you think you'll test negative? Um. Well, I just, I, I'm going, I just went and did another hair follicle, so I'm awaiting that to come back, oh. honestly. So, and, and it, I went to walk in so confident and been like, oh, hey, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Judge, I, I wanted to say I appreciate Ms. Collins' efforts if she's doing those things. That's awesome. I hope she, I hope she really does that. I would just note from the quantitative results, Your Honor, that if, if she says she fell down two months ago, her current levels are still four times the cutoff level, which I would suggest are, that's impossible. But the fact that she's taking responsibility for it, I appreciate that. If she went and got another test, it isn't going to, it isn't going to drop precipitately like that and by three times. Well, so, here, here's different than, than blood or urine though, in that I think it's kind of like a tree. You can tell by the rings in a tree Right. When the trauma occurred, yeah. So when you take a when you take an inch and a half of hair, if you used recently, then the the bottom right by the root's going to be where the concentration of whatever is. But if you use yeah. a while ago, it's still going to be in that inch and a half. But it's going to it's and it'll still show heavy use in that time. But they like basically melt the hair all down, so you can't yeah. really get an idea. You can get an idea of a snapshot of time that being about three months. But you can't pinpoint uh, during that three months when the use occurred. Somebody could have used a lot like three months ago, right on the edge, and it's still in that inch and a half, or and they might not have used since, or they might have used consistently, and it's kind of hard to tell with that. I appreciate that, Your Honor. But again, if she says, "Hey, I used, I fell off once two yeah. months ago," my experience has been you wouldn't be four, three, or four times the cutoff. Unless you basically. Unless, and, you bathed, yeah. I mean, Unless you basically bathed in it or something. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, and then, ma'am, you said you hired a lawyer. Mr. Greer is going to be representing you going forward? Uh, yes. Yes, Your Honor. All right. What he was doing? not available. He was not available today. So, um, uh, when, he, uh, his fun. When do you think you're going to get the results from that uh, hair follicle you just took? I. <laughs> I want to say, well, I want to say probably within the week, next okay. week, probably Wednesday or Thursday, probably. Okay. And like I said, I just went and put a retainer down on Greer. So he needed time to look at the case and he wasn't in today. So it just kind of like put a damper on everything. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, if I know John, probably the first thing he'll do, he'll look at, at the case and what you what you've told him. Probably the first thing he'll do is call Mr. Shepherd and say, Hey, what do we got going yeah. on? Well, and, I actually uh, gave him the I actually gave him the paperwork that I was served with from Alex's attorney and all of everything from Alex and everything for me. Like he he has all of it. Right. No, so it's just yeah. Some attorneys don't like each other at all, but I find that Mr. Shepard and Mr. Greer actually work pretty well together and try to resolve yeah. situations amicably. Um, I've seen them claw at each other a little bit over the years, but uh, for the most part, they try to they try to work things out. They don't lose sight of the fact they're representing a client, but uh, they um, they can generally work pretty well together. Uh, so, Mr. Shepard, you said no parenting time. You, you want me to take away the supervised parenting time that Ms. Collins has? Uh, my, my, is, my client is asked that judge only because I'll leave it to the court, but I'll make the argument as he's requested I do. It's just that it didn't happen all that much. It's been it's sporadic, even though he's offered it. Um, he's concerned that the folks doing it were the folks that were around her when she was um, pretty heavy into drugs before. He indicated the only time that she was ever really clean is when she was with him. And she'd probably tell you that. Um, so he was concerned about that if it's going to continue. I guess the idea was is if we're gonna if we're gonna do it with those folks, his thought is that they were they're gonna be okay if she does those things. Um, and they're not gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna stop it if they see her acting inappropriately and or under the influence. That was that was gen, that was his general concern. But we couldn't voice that to you last time because we didn't have this result then. In fact, what we had was her saying, oh, I'm clean. I'm, I'll happily take a test. And so that's my client's concern until she can show that she's clean. Um, that would be, that would be his request for the court today, judge. All right. Has something happened with Sean Collins in the meantime that, uh, that leads you to believe that he's not appropriate supervisor or anything? Like I that? would, I would say judge not in the meantime, but historically speaking, my client indicated those are the folks that Ms. Collins was around, or yes, Ms. Collins was around when she was um, really using heavily. Uh, my client said the only time she really didn't is when he was, she was kind of under his thumb. Okay, but he knew that back on March 2nd when we were here before. He, he did judge, but the idea was we couldn't prove. I mean, if she were to come back clean, then it's, it's a non, if she were to come back clean, it's a non-issue because it was the drug issue. But now that we know better and we know the levels, and so it, and that, that, is, that is his concern. It's not going to be a conducive environment to make sure you're not under the influence or doing those kind of things. Because again, um, this is, this is not a, this is not a, this is not a, um, the type of drug that you can kick on your own. I appreciate her telling us what she's going to do, but there's a lot of people in this world that have the gonna until she does it. I think we're kind of in a holding pattern judge, but that would be my client's request. And it would also hopefully push her uh, to address this. But this, this isn't going to be a situation, Judge, where she goes and says, well, I've been to three meetings and two counseling appointments and I got John Greer now. This is a problem that has plagued her for years. In my pleadings, I indicated 10 years of drug use and two terminations primarily based on that. So this isn't going to be something she's going to she's going to you know quit or kick in, inside of a couple of weeks. And I don't care what she goes and does from another drug test perspective. These things are verified. So that's that. That's my client's position today, but I, and we and we and we'll, and we'll we understand um, what what what's before the court. All right, and ma'am, you probably don't have any idea what Mr. Greer's availability is in the coming weeks. I don't. I I talk. I went in and dropped the retainer yesterday, and he was supposed to call me today, but I talked to his secretary, and he wasn't available. So I'm hoping to get a hold of him Monday. Um. But I am currently so. So I'm currently paying for my own drug test two times a week. Thank you, screen. Okay. <laughs> so, so in between, oh, she got high Monday, and she's gonna she's give it three days, and she's gonna pass clean Friday. Like, no, I'm doing it two times a week, so that cannot be said. So, without knowing that I'm not getting high, like I'm doing that. So I can prove that I'm not getting high. Like I down months ago or two months ago, three months ago, whatever, because they go back three months. Like, okay, I understand that. But this is me doing this. So I can prove that I'm clean today. I'm clean. 
Well, hair goes back three months. You're in a right. Well, exactly. You know, right. Well, see, that's why I do it two times a week. So I so they can't be like, oh, well, she used Monday, and it takes three days for meth to get out of your system, is what I was uh, told by um, the lady up at Action. I forgot her name. So yeah. that's why I, oh. she said I'd advise you to do Monday and Thursday because there's no in between. Like you. <laughs> What about uh, parenting time? How many have you had since the last hearing? Um, I've I got Tuesday and Wednesday, and I took her to a doctor's appointment Wednesday because she had a horrible diaper rash, and on top of that diaper rash, she had a fungus infection on top of it. Um, because I don't know. Um, I'm sure Alex can explain that. Um. So like within my two days that I had, I managed to get her a doctor's appointment and get her in for the diaper rash that she had because it was so bad. I mean, and, and Alex can explain that like it was horrible. Um, so it's just, I, I don't see how, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I've only had two days, two days last week or this week, and it was Tuesday and Wednesday, noon to seven. All right. Uh, Mr. Shepard or maybe Mr. Belkamp, is there any other person you would be comfortable with supervising the parenting time if you now have questions about Mr. Collins? I'll let Mr. Belkamp take that judgment. Um, either my sister. I mean, I don't know if we can meet somewhere and, and do some type of supervised thing, like a visit, maybe at her house, McDonald's. I mean, something. What's her name? Uh, Dana. Mr. Collins, you all right with that? I mean, I'm fine with it, but Alex knows that my mom and my brother, anybody in nope. my my mom, my dad, my brother are not enablers to me using drugs. Anytime I've ever used drugs, it was not in their presence. They knew nothing about it. Like, don't think, Alex, that my mom and my dad and my brother don't know about this failed test. You're wrong, dude. And you think they're happy about it? They're not at all. Okay. So for you to say that my brother who has never been pulled over, never been arrested in his life. If you think for a second that he is going to allow me to use and just be an enabler, you're wrong. So, but no, I, I'm absolutely okay with, um, I guess, Dana doing it. If that's the only, if that's the only option that I have. All right. Uh, based on the uh, drug test results, then the uh, statements uh, I've heard today, the uh, order um, the ex parte order would be continued. I'll modify paragraph three from the order of March 2nd, uh, stating that Dana Monroe would be the supervisor. And I, I assume she's probably not going to do overnights, but uh, parenting time uh, should occur hopefully a couple times a week at uh, times to be agreed to by her and, uh, and uh, Mr. Belkamp and Ms. Collins. And um, I don't know, Mr. Uh, Shepard, do you want me to set this for another review to be determined, or do you want to just uh, call this the finality of this portion let's, of the proceeding? Let's now? leave this, Your Honor, I think it's best to leave this the way it is with finality. Allow Mr. Greer to get his feet wet. She, she has just hired him, and then he can file a motion to modify it when, the, when, the circ if, when and if the circumstances suggest. For example, hey, I got a clean test now, and this, that, and the other thing, you know, I, and, and, and you're right. I, I work well with just about everybody, to be quite honest with you. There's a few folks that I'd not work, rather not work with, but Greer, <laughs> Greer is one of the folks I don't mind working with. He's a good attorney, and I, and I don't mind him, but let's, let's make this final and then leave it to Mr. Greer to file an appro the appropriate motion at the appropriate time from, on, on Ms. Collins' behalf. I'm quite certain he's capable of doing that. All right. And Ms. Collins, when we say final, we don't mean like final forever. We just mean it'll resolve, oh, no, I know. It'll resolve that motion. You've still got uh, the right to, you know, have a trial and, and hearings on on a uh, what, what the court will call a final order. But and then again, the, the, the matter is still open until the child turns 18 for post judgment uh, proceedings as the needs of the child dictate. So um, we'll go with that order for now. Uh, when, uh, when you and Mr. Greer feel that uh, the time comes to review this, you can file a motion and uh, we'll take it up again at that time. All right? Thank you, Judge. Yes, sir. All right, we should be all set. Good luck, folks. Thank you. My name is Ross from the Department of Health and Human Services alleging that the children were at risk and in need of protection. Order was entered, placing the, those children with the department uh, with an understanding that two would require uh, foster care because their father was also a respondent and is incarcerated and that one would be placed, that being Reese, would be placed with the father. Um, 
who uh, pursuant to court orders and file 22-58123, DP, New Diego County case, uh, had physical custody of that child. And uh, an order was entered to that effect. Uh, the matter was set for a preliminary hearing pursuant to court rule uh, within 24 hours. And that's why we're here at this time. Ms. Uh, Colby is present, the mother of all three children via Zoom, as well as Mr. Salasina on behalf of the department, Mr. Good on behalf of Ms. Colby, uh, Ms. Barco on behalf of the children, and uh, Mr. Schropp has been appointed to represent the other respondent parent, that being Jory McCormick, father of Bentley and Ophelia. Mr. McCormick is incarcerated in the a correctional facility was not able to accommodate his appearance today. Um, normally that would uh, possibly trigger an adjournment. However, a uh, preliminary hearing needs to be held within 24 hours of the date of placement and uh, we're gonna proceed today in his absence. Mr. Robinson is the father of Reese. He's not present, he's not a respondent. We're doing the matter via Zoom and in person. Any objections? No, no your honor. Uh, all right. Uh, Ms. Colby, do you know if any of these children have any Native American heritage? No, they do not. Okay. Uh, and I guess, uh, Mr. Salcino, how do you want to proceed today? If I could, Your Honor, I'd like to call Ms. Regina Moss. Uh, did you file the petition that's presently before the court? I did. And are all of those children under the age of 18? Yes, they are. At the time uh, you filed your petition, where were those children living? They were um, living with mother, Sophie Colby. Okay. And where did she reside? 312. What county is that located in? Nuevo County. Okay. And uh, so who who's the children's mother, just for the sake of the record? Um, the children's mother is Sophie Colby. And uh, who are the fathers of the children? Um, there is two fathers. Um, one is Ryan Robinson. He's the father of three. And we have a Joey McCormick, who is the father of Ophelia and um, Bentley. Okay. Uh, are all of the parents respondents to your petition? Um, um, uh, Ryan Robinson is not a respondent. Okay. Um, do you know where uh, Jory McCormick resides? He is currently incarcerated in prison um, at Newberry Correctional Facility. Okay. Is that in Michigan? That is in Michigan. All right. Uh, why did you believe that the children were at risk and in need of protection, uh, Ms. Moss? Um, since the case opening um, around September, I have been working with Sophie for approximately um, six months. Within that time period, I have um, given her several drug screens, which they've all been tested positive for methamphetamine. Um, some include THC. Um, during my visit on 316, I found Sophie to be under the influence of methamphetamine, um, in which she admitted to using that day, reporting it was in the bathroom. Um, the children were in, were, was in her care. Um, at that time, and the methamphetamine was found to be in her in her purse, in her possession, with um, and that was accessible to the children. Okay. Did she show you the methamphetamine? Yes, she did. What uh, is the substantial risk of harm to the children if they remain uh, placed in the home with Ms. Colby? I feel because of a continu their continued drug use um, by Ms. Colby that the children, there is still huge concerns of lack of supervision. I feel that there's concerns of um, to the children being exposed to um, the methamphetamine um, and also to individuals that are also, um, uh, that she may be associated with that are, that are using, actively using. Okay. Um, is Mr. Uh, Jory McCormick in a position to uh, provide care and custody for Bentley and Ophelia? No, he is not. He is incarcerated until the earliest release date, June 23rd, 2025. Okay. Uh, so 2025? Yes, 2025. What uh, reasonable efforts have you made to try to prevent the need to remove the children from Ms. Povey's care and custody? Um, during the, the ongoing case, I have worked with her very closely. I have um, given her um, multiple drug screens. 
Um, she's been giving gas cards um, on 12-25-23 and 110-23, or actually 12-25 at 22 and 110 at 23. The amount of those gas cards was $60, total amount of $120 in order to help her get her children to um, um, physician care and dental appointments, which was never followed through with. Also, Family First Services was put in place. Um, although it was completed, it was not completed successfully and the goals was not met and no progress made. She has also been, since the beginning of the case opening, we have been trying to get her to complete substance abuse assessments. Um, one was started with Wedgwood, but was never followed through with. Um, and then I've also talked to her about getting in contact with Arbor Circle and CMH um, very recently, and none of that has been followed through with as well. Um, FTBS services has also been started, but had to be closed unsuccessfully because she was not getting in contact with the worker. Also provided to Sophie was a toddler bed for Ophelia, a comforter set for Ophelia, a comforter set for Bentley. I provided a lockbox. Um, diapers, several diapers and whites have been given to the family. I've also provided her with um, basic things as um, sleep sets, panties, socks, and just um, various little things for clothing. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, at this time, do you believe that uh, is safe in the care and custody of Ryan? Yes, I do feel that way. Okay. Uh, that way. Where where are the uh, where is Bentley and Ophelia currently placed? They are, they are placed with a foster care family, and I did not grab the names. They're actually, if I can, I can go get them. Um, we put okay. we took them there yesterday. Um, they are um, seasoned foster care workers. From my conversations with them, that um, this is not the first time they've had children in their care. Um, they are well adapted to take care of the children and I can grab their names. Is, is that a licensed foster home? In a licensed foster home. Is it a uh, non, uh, non-relative? Non-relative foster home. Okay. Have you made any attempts to find relative placement for the children? Um, we have made attempts, um, two sisters of Sophie's ha has, um, approached us wanting to try to care for the children. Um, we have gathered just basic information about each of um, each of the sisters. Um, this information is going to be referred to licensing. Okay. Um, so at this time, what would you like the court to do today? The Department of Health and Human Services um, continues to have ongoing concerns with the substance abuse of Sophie Povey and the failure to follow appropriate safety and planning measures regarding her substance use. Um, as well as continued concerns of supervision. The department respectfully requests that the honorable court authorize this petition for removal, placing the children in the care and custody of the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, the department um, also re respectfully requests the honorable courts to authorize the petition of removal for recent from the care and custody of Sophie Povey, releasing her to her father, Ryan Ryan. Um, we do re um, recommend that Sophie Povey have supervised parenting time with the children and that Joey McCormick's parenting time is suspended due, as incar due to incarceration. Okay. Now, you mentioned there that there was some uh, lack of follow through on appropriate safety planning. Ha was a safety plan put in place for Ms. Povey to follow? Yes. And that what was concerning substance use. Okay. What was the safety plan? The safety plan was that um, there would always be an appropriate caretaker in the home when caring for the children and that any use at all be not done in the home, around the children, and, and, and done in a separate place, and that there always was an appropriate caretaker there. Okay. And Ms. So uh, Ms. Povey admitted to you uh, that she had, in fact, uh, used methamphetamine uh, while uh, Reese and Ophelia were in her care. Is that correct? Yes. In the morning at 316, she admitted that she had used that morning in the bathroom. And uh, that use occurred in uh, Miss Povey's home, correct? It occurred at a friend that she was staying with. Okay. And the children were also staying there? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions.
Sean, any questions? Uh, you, you know, uh, at one point in your petition, ma'am, that Jory McCormick is the legal father. Have you seen documentation to confirm that? No, I have not seen documentation of that. Are you aware of it? Documents? No, um, this was an emergency petition, so I can follow through with that or follow up with that. Because okay. I know later on in the petition, you said biological father. Did, uh, do you have any evidence one way or the other? Um, I reported by Sophie that he is the bi biological father of the children. Did she say whether or not he'd signed like an affidavit of parentage? Um, I do not recall her telling me that. Okay. Was he ever married hey. to her? I do. I, I do not recall um, when we talked about him, whether or not they've been married. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further. No, we don't. There's an open DS case. Uh, oh, for, I guess a year. Okay. So it is confirmed. So that, right. okay. that would, uh, it would be a DP case. If it was, uh, Very good. Uh, yep. Thank you. That was my last year. All right, uh, Mr. Good, any questions? Uh, not at this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Marco, any questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Sal, seen any other evidence? No additional evidence for today's purposes, Your Honor. Mr. Trump, any evidence? No, Your Honor. Mr. Good, any evidence? No, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Marco, any evidence? No. Mr. Sal, seen any final comments? Just that you follow the recommendations as outlined by by uh, Miss Moss. Uh, further, I, I think it would be appropriate at this time because Ryan is the uh, legal father of Reese and uh, that uh, Ryan Ryan not a respondent to the petition uh, that we removed from this petition uh, as the child is uh, in the proper care and custody of a legal parent. Any final comments? No. Mr. Good, any final comments? Um. Assuming the court finds probable cause, which is probably pretty likely, I just ask the parenting time be started uh, as soon as possible at whatever conditions the department would set forth. Ms. Barco, any comments? Uh, just that I agree with the department at this time, Your Honor. All right. Uh, as I indicated, I've reviewed the petition. I've heard the uh, testimony of Ms. Moss today um, and uh, make the following findings based on Ms. Moss's testimony that she's worked with uh, Ms. Povey for about six months, uh, that Ms. Povey has consistently tested positive for methamphetamine over those six months, and is, uh, that supervision has been an issue of uh, young children. Um, and that uh, Mr. McCormick is currently incarcerated and not able to provide for his children that uh, certainly probable cause exists to believe the facts alleged in the petition are true. The petition will be authorized and set for a pretrial. Ms. Povey, this is not a final determination of whether these children have been abused or neglected, but like I said, an initial hearing that has to be held relatively quickly after children are removed from the care of a parent. We still, uh, have the right to deny or contest any of the allegations contained in the petition and have a trial. Uh, that trial could be in front of myself, the referee, in front of a judge, or in front of a jury, whereby it would have to be proven by preponderance of evidence that some or all of those allegations are true, at least enough for uh, the court to uh, maintain jurisdiction at that point. For today's purposes, though, I am finding uh, that probable cause exists and that uh, the petition will be authorized and will be set for a pretrial. That'll take place on uh, April 26, 2023 at 2.30. At that time, it'll be determined if you're gonna have a trial or some other resolution to the petition. In the meantime, I would find that based on Ms. Moss's testimony regarding substance abuse, supervision and incarceration, that continuation of the children's residence with Ms. Bobie would be contrary to the welfare and placement would be in their best interest. Reasonable efforts were made to alleviate the need for placement, that being safety plans and in-home services, but that was not successful in addressing the issues that have led now to the petition and removal. There would be a substantial risk of harm in continued placement of the children with Ms. Povey. Uh, Ms. Povey, you're directed to comply with and benefit from any services that are offered by the department uh, to address these issues, uh, and you'd be granted supervised parenting time at times coordinated by the department. Mr. McCormick's parenting time would be suspended while he's incarcerated. Uh, and uh, because Reed has now been placed back in the care of her father, who is the custodial parent and who is not a respondent in this matter, that child would be removed from these proceedings. Ms. Uh, Povey, uh, 
In addition to what I've told you, you do have the right to appeal decisions of the court. First and foremost, you can file an objection to a referee recommendation. Second, you can file an appeal with the Court of Appeals. If you wish to do so and you needed an attorney to assist you with that appeal, the court would appoint one for you. If you needed transcripts or documents for the appeal, the court would provide those. Uh, you would need to um, um, be cognizant of Michigan Court Rule 3.993, A1A2, and C uh, regarding the amount of time within which you must file an appeal after the entry of the order. Um, that's an advice of rights, and I'll include that with a copy of the order you received in this matter. Uh, I think I've addressed all the issues up for today. Uh, Council, anything else? Okay. There you are. Yeah. All right, we should be all set. Uh, and I'll see everybody back here in this matter, like I said, on April 26th at 2.30 for a free trial. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.